If this witch was being honest and for some reason they felt that she was, then that meant that this could be the last night they spent without a child. That sounds wrong. The lumber that the recluse had spent the morning gathering slipped through their hands as they spotted her. The witch of the woods. She began to speak. You desire a child, yes. For some, those are quite easy to come by. But not you, it would seem. I don't know why she speaks like that, but she does. Someone approaches you from behind, their face obscured by a hood. You're the girl with the natural toxins, right? If you give me some, you'll be compensated well. Uh, let's tell them. Why not? Oh yeah, is that how teeth work? At least once you've watched your baby teeth and your adult teeth. No, they just, they just go back. I uh, think they what? Hello, 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 and welcome back. Today, we are playing a game called Mushroom Musume. Musume? M-U-S-U-M-E. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. And the description on Steam says, raise a mushroom from a spore into a fine young woman, and then discover the twists and turns her life may take in this creepy, cute, fairy tale life simulation game. Release date is Q4 2024 and the developer and publisher are mortally moonstruck games. So raising a mushroom from a spore into a fine young woman huh, sounds like my kind of thing. And having said that, let's go. Once upon a time there was a humble recluse. Oh my goodness, do the music. Though they had no need for society, they did often find themselves home to a loneliness that they could never quite shake. In the morning, the sun would rise, at night it would set. The recluse would observe this splendour, knowing that the sight would be made all the more beautiful by having someone to share it with. It wasn't that they desired a relationship, perhaps it was a flame that had burned them one too many times, or perhaps they were simply disinterested. No. A child. That's what they wanted. Said nobody ever. Someone to take care of, to teach. Unfortunately, it was a longing that could not be found. Not in these woods alone. You could just get a pet. You could just, just get a pet. However, we're never quite as alone as we think. Oh, that's a slightly creepy. One day a witch appeared, as if drawn by the intensity of the recluse's desire. The lumber that the recluse had spent the morning gathering slipped through their hands as they spotted her. The witch of the woods. She began to speak. You desire a child, yes. For some, those are quite easy to come by. But not you, it would seem. I don't know why she speaks like that, but she does. Let us make a deal then. If you do three simple chores for me, I will present you with a daughter of your... <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> the recluse got up in a moment of naivety, quickly agreed. The witch, knowing that the recluse was destined to accept, simply nodded and began to deliver the first of these so-called chores without hesitation. So we have three tasks and then we can meet daughter smiley face emoji. Wait, is this the witch? Ruth struggles to be achieved without presence. Offer me that which embodies the emotion you would provide for your daughter. The recluse pondered for a moment, thinking of what they had to had to offer. The emo so it's her temperament, right? So vain, presumably, if it's a mirror. A deteriorating book of poetry. What, what does deteriorating mean though for someone's like demeanor and personality? A stone lawn ornament. So is she gonna be like made of stone? Very still. I'm gonna go for the deteriorating book of poetry because it feels it feels like me, okay. Almost shamefully. There's nothing to be ashamed of. We're all deteriorating in some way. The recluse located an old book of poetry from when they were young and were going through a phase. Okay. The prose wasn't good by any standard, but it would nevertheless serve as an excellent expression of angst and youthful rebellion for their daughter. 
Returning to the witch, the recluse held out their offering. So she's going to be an emo, basically, is what you're saying to me. She's going to have a MySpace page and a fringe. My, I suppose all growth comes at a cost, no? Feeling a tender hollowness, the recluse designed, declined to answer. Oh, no, I didn't do the, the voice. The second day, the recluse sept, slept more soundly that night than they had in ages. Having a purpose again soothed them, even if they had found themselves caught up with a witch. I could have given that witch any voice. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I don't know why it's gone the way that it has, but it has. They elected not to think about that. Instead, when the morning came, they simply did what they had to do, which is to say, they got up and went to meet with the witch. Upon watching the recluse's approach, a sardonic smile at the witch's face. <laughs> I can't! I <gasps> you completed your first task admirably. Two more and I can finally give you what you want. What voice is that? It's from something. There's no way I came up with that. She paused for only a moment before delivering the next message of import. Oh, it's Tony Harrison from the Mighty Boosh. If... Tony Harrison, kind of. Maybe? I don't know. There have been some... Oh. There have been some... <clears throat> activities I've been meaning to get to. Perhaps you could make yourself useful and cross one off the list for me. Not realising they were simply saving the witch some time, the recluse determined which task they were most suited for. Neutralise her most dangerously volatile regents, or restock a selection of unsettling components, or organise a surprisingly understated, oh, understated collection of keepsakes. Mm. What am I feeling in my bones here? Um... Oh, I'm, I do enjoy the organizing, but let's do. I want some drama in my life. Let's uh, let's restock a selection of unsettling components. As the recluse began to take stock of the witch's belongings, they simply grew more and more astonished at the sort of items she kept in her possession. They dutifully gathered all manner of dolls, dolls. They dutifully gathered all manner of doll's eye, newt's tail, and even the hair from their own body. Hopefully that last thing wouldn't cause too much trouble in the future, knowing the way that witches are. I was just thinking that. Never give over your bodily fluids and bits and things to a witch or a serial killer. Arriving back to their meeting point, the recluse was excited to report their progress to the witch. Ah, very good. Ah, very good. How kind of you. After quickly wiping themselves down, the recluse returned to their hut for the remainder of the night. The third day. With two assignments complete, the recluse could feel their excitement grow. If this witch was being honest, and for some reason they felt that she was, then that meant that this could be the last night they spent without a child. That sounds a bit wrong they hoped so at least that was all they could do barely remembering to get dressed the recluse dashed to the meeting spot again the witch had been waiting there for them welcome back recluse are you prepared today is your big day is it not the last task is an easy one, or at least I believe so. Bring me something colourful, something bright, and you think will suit her. Uh, when they were first told of the three tasks, the recluse had imagined that things were much more difficult. This seemed so easy as to be a trick. Which they suppose only meant they should take it seriously, as if a mistake could mean death. With death in mind, the recluse needed to... <laughs> With death in mind, the recluse needed to decide where to search for colour. A field of flowers or a stony river. The stony... I don't really want to like, just bring back a whole fish. Like, I'm not Gollum. Let's go to the field of flowers. If someone wanted colour, where else was there to even consider? The recluse decided to make their way to a particularly idyllic field of flowers. The field was filled with an overwhelming amount of choice. Before long, the recluse narrowed the options down to a few. 
Bleeding Hearts. I love Bleeding Hearts. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was so overdramatic. It's because I played Garden Life and I found out what Bleeding Hearts were. And I love them. And now every time I go to a garden centre, because I'm elderly now, um, I look for Bleeding Hearts because I love them. Uh, sanguine and Symbolic Drops. I don't think I've ever found one. I don't know. Foxglove. Isn't that poisonous? Cardinal flowers, a prideful red bloom. What's that? A pumpkin. Forget me nots, light hearted blue. What colour were the sanguine? I, I want the bleeding hearts. As the recluse plucked the crimson bleeding hearts from their base, they found their thoughts burning up. An old guest sprang to mind, and the bitter memories that came alongside them. Regardless, the recluse turned back to the flowers. Their daughter would be happy, healthy, and live a hearty life. Discovered blood, yay! My favourite. The recluse returned to the witch's hut, coloured item in hand. She silently took the object, nodding her head to the recluse in recognition. The recluse stood there for a moment, unsure, before finally the witch realised what they expected. Ugh. Oh ho ho! I'm so sorry. Wait. Oh ho ho! You want your promised daughter, don't you? Her voice was almost. Her voice was almost mocking, but at least it was not overtly cruel. I suppose I must tell you that I lied, human. I do require several more trifling things from you. First is the matter of payment. What are you talking about? I brought you so many things. The recluse should have known that everything is for a cost. I gave you my poetry book. Pay me now with wealth. Pay me now with life. What if we just die? Pay me sometime soon in larger quantities. Pay me at a much later date in the way I choose. Uh... Okay. They told the witch they would offer life as payment. Certainly. Stepping forward, she took them in a cold yet not unkind embrace. They awoke hours later with an uneasy feeling that something was missing. The witch was still there. Waiting for the recluse. Oh my god. Oh my god. What if I have a pet and she's killed it? Oh no, what have I done? I thought it was going to be me. With the payment. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. To be honest with you, I didn't have many thoughts running through my brain at the time. In fact, I did. I had way too many. I had about 10 of them. That was the problem. With the payment settled, the witch simply smiled and handed the recluse a small pot. You... Humans are tricky, but mushrooms are much more resilient. Consider this an upgrade. Don't worry, eventually she will develop a mind. Simply give her time, as much as she needs. Soon your wish will be in full bloom. I suppose with all that settled though, there is one last thing for you to consider. A young girl needs a proper name. The recluse thought on the witch's demand before offering the final thing they had to give. Let's call her short for bleeding heart. Blah. Like, poor Black Morcock. Then she walked away, only fate knowing if the two should ever meet again. Chapter 2 Cultivation. Though the recluse was unsure of the specifics, they did realise it was important to heed her instructions. Care for the pot and the dirt and everything that lay within, a voice said from the distant memories of yesterday. Um, so the recluse geared up, and as any parent should, and assessed the things that they needed to raise a child. Finances, in case the village, nearby village had goods or services that you could not provide. Nutrients for the child. That's a strange way to refer to that food. Nutrients. I'm going to have to go soon to have some nutrients. Um, they would need plenty as it would be depleted on a daily basis. Yeah, again, just a weird way to say have food and get hungry. Get hungry, eat food, get hungry again, eat more food. Ideally, cheese-based snacks baby bells maybe and finally the recluse's own stamina could not be ignored one cannot burn the candle from both ends indefinitely thus began the longest growing season of the recluse's life 
Uh, harsh weather has taken its toll on your garden. What a beautiful garden. And your entire harvest has been lost. If I had to pick a different flower, would I have a different color background here? Because I think like the, the purpley would have been really nice. Um, weeks worth of food and labor has been rotted and destroyed without immediate action. You and your daughter will be in trouble. I mean, she's not, but she's a mushroom. I'm so confused. Accept the loss for now. You can make do. Till the garden again and start over from, well, yeah, let's do that. No use crying over ruined crops. You simply make adjustments to your garden. There will be less variety this season. Oh, so do I have to balance these things? I haven't spent any money though, so that's fine. Uh, that's what matters. The decision being made. Wait, is that the life that she took? It wasn't mine, it was my garden's. That's fine, I seem to have fixed that very easily. You haven't been taking very good care of yourself and you find yourself so worn out, even leaving the house is a challenge. If you continue on without regard for your own stamina, you might very well die. That does seem like something I would do. Oh well, yeah, let's, let's stay a bit. You'll be no use to your daughter in this state, so you decide to spend the next the day resting. Christ, my reading comprehension is getting terrible. Sitting in bed, you think about your daughter and all of the tasks that you will get done tomorrow. The decision being made, life continued. Is that my daughter, my little fungus daughter? Oh, look at her! Your daughter has changed in the night. She's a demon. All women are demons. Banshees in the corner of the room. Okay, look at her. She's so cute. One day you find your daughter has left her pot and now hops around your home with. I'm so, like, I get it, and it's cute, but I feel so. I feel weird and uncomfortable. The creature jumps about with ease, with clear intent now visible on her new face. It's a weird way to describe a face, that. New. Her new face. Or was her old face? Her demeanor seems active and brazen, often finding herself engaged in troublesome play. Um... The motivate her to do something safer, spend, the spend time nurturing her environment encourage her boldness i'm mm, i'm gonna do the nurturing you decide now is the best time to promote her growth spending extra effort improving her living conditions your daughter seems to appreciate the attention and emotes cheerfully as mushrooms often do the decision being made life continued i've only just realized that that's a repeated statement one evening, you hear a light knocking at your door. Quite a rare occurrence. Peeking through the window, you witness none other than the Witch of the Woods standing on the doorstep of your humble hut. Could she be here for a visit or to settle a debt? Why would I need to... My finances seem okay, to be honest. No, I can't meet my mushroom. Perhaps it was time for your daughter to meet the witch. She could maybe even learn a thing or two. The two of you answer the door and invite the gloomy woman. At least the voice is accurate now though, right? Inside for dry and awkward small talk. Something about the way, what did what happened there? The two absently stare at each other. You wonder if they've made some sort of, no, stay away from my mushroom child. The decision being made, life continued. One evening, you discover many footprints outside your home, three toed and webbed. Some strange creatures have been poking around. Free toad and webbed. Free toad and webbed. Like a duck? A duck? Frog? You've heard the rivers of these woods are home to nefarious turtle like creatures that capture human children only to bring them home and drown them. That's fine because my child is a mushroom. Your child isn't a human, but you can feel the leer of envious eyes from the tree line. They know a precious daughter when they see one. Well, they wouldn't be coming for me. By the looks of the tracks, these ones are quite young. Perhaps you can do something to frighten them away from your home. Okay, so I don't want to go too far in case they bring back their parents. I want a magic wand. I want a magic wand. 
There are always market stores to be found catering to the cautious and superstitious folk who want to, I was about to say like, oh my God, nurse, like what if it's a fake magic wand? Because obviously like magic might not be real, but I have a mushroom for a child. You head into town to procure some charms, irregular pearl beads strung through warded strings and quickly go about hanging them around the tree line. What? I thought I was getting a wand. The ward seems to work perfectly as the footprints in beady-eyed glares cease. Your daughter is safe for now. The decision being made. Do you know what the thing is as well? I'm so indecisive and I always worry that the decisions I make are the wrong ones and this game is just like that, but like dialed up to a hundred and I'm trying really hard not to think about the things that I've done and if I should have done things differently. Look at my little mushroom. Huh? Something's happening. <gasps> Your daughter has changed in the night. Yeah, I'm way more uncomfortable with this because it's like an anthropomorphic. Is that the right word? But you know, kind of human, kind of mushroom. Like where does the mushroom end and the human begin? And like, I imagine it's all like, ooh, you know. One morning, you notice your daughter is nowhere to be seen. After an hour of searching, you find her standing perfectly still in a dense stand of trees. I mean, she is a mushroom. She probably feels very at home doing that. To your surprise, the creature had now taken the form of a young girl. You feel relieved to confirm the witch had not betrayed you. At your approach, she turns and acknowledges you silently before continuing to carefully watch her surroundings. Watch her quietly. Buy her a nice gift to celebrate. What? Celebrate what? That she's standing in the trees? I don't remember getting gifts of a stand-in when I was a child. Tell her it's time to go home. I'm going to watch her. You, you wonder why your daughter has such, has such a silent intensity. But decide not to disturb her. Taking a seat near her, you appreciate the beauty of the forest and spend time thinking lovingly of your daughter. So lovingly. I often think lovingly of mushrooms. As only a vegetarian could. After several uneasy minutes, she simply turns and walks in the direction of home, seemingly finished with her quiet watching. The decision being made, life continued. You awaken only to discover that your daughter is covered in tiny parasitic creatures. For the sake of her health, you should probably find a way to get rid of the little pests. Buy some fine herbal pesticides. She's all organic. Leave them be. Give the child a thorough rinse or encourage her to embrace the change. Um, I'm going to rinse her, even though I'm pretty sure I'm going to do nothing. After a moment of contemplation, you gather the requisite components for a soapy bath. Is it good to bath a mushroom? I don't really know. I don't know. I don't really know much about the life of a mushroom. Why is it doing a sad song? The creatures are dealt with. The decision being made. Life continued. One day you awake slightly earlier than usual. In your somewhat somnambulant state, you hear an ethereal croon originating from your garden. When you go out, you spot it. A small fairy clad in blood is sitting amongst your crops. This really reminds me of um the home safety hotline like imagery how things were like drawn and pictured if you haven't watched it my series on home safety hotline you should it's good it's a good time if you like these point and click things go and watch it build a small fairy garden in your daughter's room using supplies hunt the fairy to use as food oh my nutrients are getting super low offer a coin to the fairy I want, I want to make a fairy garden. Look, no one ever said I'd make a good parent. Without delay, you gather your supplies, greenery, some common foods, throw in a drop of blood. Faye loved that sort of thing. After consulting some books to ensure there is an appropriate space, you lure the fairy in with treats. Though they seem unsure at first, the fairy eventually accepts your offer of a home. Is that good? I don't know. I have no nutrients. I really need some more nutrients. You feel a sense of relief. The girl's been asking you for a pet. Has she? Can she speak with her mushroomy vocal cords? Finally, you have something for her. 
the decision being made, life continued. An end? One night, you find yourself struggling to sleep. Your mind wanders as you consider your current place in life. You've lived peacefully with your daughter for many moons. Initially, it was strange. Well, it never stopped being strange, but you were always thankful for the company. Besides, the affection you felt for her was like any parent would feel towards their child. That was normal, at least. Your thoughts turned to the concept of time, particularly how you were once alone and how you're afraid that you'll be again someday. Your daughter has had more and more curiosities about the outside world. It's only a matter of time before she wants to strike her own path. You hope you will be fulfilled now. You hope you've done enough. Ultimately, you find comfort in what you've done. You may have had many failures in your life, but there's one thing you know you can die proud of. Your mushroom. And a new beginning. Telling the- oh my goodness, am I the mushroom now? Tell the, telling the recluse you wanted to see more of the world wasn't an easy conversation. As they grew older, you worried about leaving them on their own. But thankfully, your concerns were unwarranted. They were happy that you'd grown enough to want to move out. They even offered to help you build your own home close to theirs. You were welcome to visit any time, obviously. Faster than you would have anticipated, the two of you built your home together. They showed you all of the tricks they knew and made sure to impart as much knowledge as they possibly could. Finally, the day arrived. You were officially on your own. You were scared, a little, but also excited. It felt like a new chapter was just beginning for you. Blot! I'm an assertive blood moral. Um... Chapter 3, A Girl on Her Own. Oh, how adorable. Walking through the forest one day, you think to take a path yet untraveled. Oh my goodness, look at all of these. What about my parent with their nutrients? Are they going to be okay? The road you follow is old. Time-worn rivulets and fresh dung pock. The path? that pock or is it going to say pack i don't know as underbrush chokes it from either side regardless the smell of an adventure hangs in the air and it smells wonderful the wind carries a fragrance clear into your heart and stirs with an intense curiosity before long you find another even tighter pa path branching off from where you're walking and soon you break out into a glade the area is smaller than a hut, but in the centre of its intimate bow stands a statue long since forgotten. Uh, <laughs> nope. Um, I want to examine the statue. The statue is of a woman. The craftsmanship alone is worth commending. The proportions are incredibly lifelike. The figure's hair is short but detailed with every strand perfectly held in place. There is a pain in the statue's eyes, one of loss and grief. It seems, standing there, she is almost making eye contact with you. Suddenly aware of your surroundings, you feel a slight discomfort of the breeze and cast your eyes away from the girl's stare. Underneath, a plaque makes up the base of the statue. Without the skill to read, however, you can only surmise that this is a grave marker, one for a girl long lost to the world. You pause for a moment before turning your attention back to the glade at large, Feels as though there's a presence watching you from beyond the trees, but you chalk it up to nerves. Uh, I would like to examine the glade. While the opening is small, there's enough room to wander around. Trees on all sides prevent you from leaving aside from the way that you came, and a thick canopy prevents light from flooding in, leaving only the spare ray of illumination. There really isn't much to the glade aside from the plants settering the forest floor, several different herbs that have been cultivated to produce sublime results. What? What? I got a seven. You meander around the glade, eventually finding a plant you originally mistook for a bush. Its branches are heavy and the primary source of the fragrance you caught on the wind. You break off a piece, enamored by the aroma, and you store it on your person. Hey, leave the glade. 
Wondering though there are eyes watching you, you gather yourself and head back towards the more familiar paths. While sitting outside near your garden and taking in the fresh air, you hear the Gah! of a crow. Then another Gah! and another. Gah! Are they going to eat me because I'm a mushroom? You look up to find a rather large group of sleek black birds perched in the trees above you. A few are eyeing your garden while others seem more focused on you. Is that the house we built? Because that's massive. That is a massive house. Uh, I'm going to feed the crows because crows are really clever and they remember people and they bring you presents and they'll be like, nice little pet. What? You head to your kitchen scrounging up some nuts and bits of old bread before returning to the murder outside. After generous generously tossing the food to the ground you stand around waiting for the crows to come and eat none of the birds are willing to trust the food and eventually the murder up and flies away that's fine whatever you stand around uh trying to decide if you want to take the uneaten food back or not i don't want to it's fine leave it there the sun is low in the sky casting a beautiful warm tint across everything that you saw Today it's a particularly beautiful sight. Blossoming fruit trees and the wind blowing through the grass. Your eyes feel heavy and suddenly you find yourself falling into a deep sleep. In your dreams you're sitting on a tree branch. There's a flute playing somewhere. Then suddenly the flute is next to you. Attached to it is the vague shape of a woman. Is it... is it the witchy woo? I haven't seen you around here before. Welcome! Whenever you go to look at her, it feels like she shifts. You can't quite describe her. You probably won't remember me when you wake up, but it's nice to meet you. After sitting in silence for a second, she starts playing again. There's a chance that this isn't the witch and everyone just has this voice now. Uh, where do you go when I'm awake? I want to fly. The landscape looks so lush, you feel compelled to enjoy it thoroughly. You lean over, falling off the branch and into the air. You spin in circles and then span out. The feeling of the wind in your hair invigorates you. When you wake up, you feel like you've slept far longer than you had. You put the feeling behind you. It's dark out. You should be getting home. You feel a crisp breeze. The heat is relenting. Trees are changing in colour. Fall has arrived. While aimlessly wandering one day, you decide the best use of your time would be to do some scouting. Always useful to expand your mental map of the area. The country near your home is lush with many diverse landscapes to be found. You decide to head to the north towards a particularly damp, dense forest that's home to a variety of useful plants. As a child, this is where you knew to get medicine plants from, but there was danger there as well. You step into the forest, feeling a humid breeze on your fungal cheek. Oh, don't say fungal cheek, that's just weird. There's an omnipresent buzz of insects pervading the air. This section of forest feels much different than where you live and you find it's hard to feel at peace. Despite this, the flora and fauna is resplendent. You find yourself looking from plant to plant. Finally, you see something quite interesting. A beautiful large pink flower stands tall in a nearby clearing. Kind of looks like a like a insect body attached to a flower. The petals are twisted, forming a large sparkling bud that's larger than your head. The single flower is the distinction of the plant, but you observe that its stalk is robust and strangely segmented. It feels a bit like a monolith. For a moment, you simply stand and stare at it. Something about this strange plant leaves you with a feeling of awe. You suspect you may be able to sell this flower in the market for quite a pretty penny, or perhaps. Keep it splendor for yourself. Mm. I... I'm gonna leave it where it is. As you contemplate the flower, you realize you've never seen one quite like it before. It felt wrong to kill something like that, even if it was only a plant. Some people would claim that you are only a plant after all. Botanicals must stick together. You continue exploring for a while. Why... Where... <laughs> You heard. When you tire, you walk home with the comfort of knowing that you are, if nothing else, polite to fellow plants. An eerie fog covers the roads throughout town as you take a late night walk. 
Someone approaches you from behind, their face obscured by a hood. You're the girl with the natural toxins, right? If you give me some, you'll be compensated well. Uh, what? But you're not. You try to explain the figure. They m to the figure, they must be mistaken. You're not a girl with toxins. They pause awkwardly, seeming unsure if their information was bad or if you were attempting to lie to them. I don't know what to tell you, lady. Maybe you have some things that you need to sort out. They leave you confused, alone in the darkness. What was that about? Did they say that or did we say that? Afterwards, you go home and do some experimentation. You have a startling realization that perhaps you are not what you were appear. Walking around the village one day, you overhear a gaggle of fun-sized humans giggling the time away. You gradually sneak up on them and get close. Remarkably close. They don't really seem to care that you're there. They, wait, are they ignoring you on purpose? The nerve of some fleshies. Uh, at least you can listen in to whatever seems to be so engrossing. How much? One of the children exclaims, her jaw dropped in shit awe of another kid whose chest is proudly puffed out. With a grin, the child reiterates, Enough to buy three bags of candy. No fair. Another child cries out. When I lost mine, all she brought me was enough for a hoop and a stick. Oh my goodness, I if you ever played with a hoop and a stick, it's it's not fun. It's not I'm not that old. I'm not that old, but I did go to a I did go to Beamish in the north of England where um it's all it's a town that's all like early twentieth century Victorian and I went with school and um one of the things we did is we had to do a class as Victorian students. Obviously, we didn't get hit and stuff, but at break time, at recess, uh, we went outside to play with the Victorian toys, and one of the toys was a hoop and a stick. It wasn't very fun, and everyone was very mean and strict, and like people with left-handedness had to write with their right hands and stuff. It was weird. Uh, the other kids looked at the child with pity, Hoop and stick was so last season. That's what I'm saying. Well, anyway, I have another one loose, so I can expect even more candy here soon. That's not fair. I want to lose a tooth. You're younger than me. What gives? Probably because of all that candy, one of the kids said, getting met with only a shrug from the proud child as he snacked on his treats. Whatever, I'm going to go home and pull my tooth out myself. And when you see me next, I'll have four bags of candy. The girl stormed off, determined to come into some coin of her own. I mean, pulling your teeth ain't it. It ain't it, hun. Which is odd when you think about it. Do these kids get money for their teeth? Do they sell their other parts? You wonder briefly about the value of a kidney when you hear one of the gremlins shout, Be sure to pack your pillow. <laughs> Aha, you realise, there's a caveat. One must need a tooth and then store it under their pillow. And then... Money? Last you checked, what you'd considered your teeth grow back after some time. This could prove to be a lucrative venture. At length, you arrive home and find yourself less certain about this than you were in the village. It's not like the fun-sized humans are known for their honesty. You pause a moment and think. Uh, let's do it. Let's pull the tooth. We live in a world of magic. Maybe we will get stuff. Not wanting to put any more time in attempting to convince yourself otherwise, you reach up into your mouth and grab hold of what passes in your body as a tooth. What, what, what would pass as a tooth for a mushroom? Slowly, steadily, pressure builds as you pull and then... No. A tooth broke off easily like a bar of chocolate, but oh, mycelium? Mycelium? So much worse. Regardless, you're now in the possession of a detached tooth and are eager to see what comes with resting it under your pillow. You snap awake in the middle of the night, your first thought being of what lays beneath your pillow. But when you check, you find nothing. Not even your tooth remains. Did we squish it? So you's awake then, eh? A small 
Voice chimes. I know this voice sounds like the child, but just go with it. In the centre of the room, glancing over, you spot an ill-tempered fairy and their few companions. Tears to ting. You put a tooth under the pillow, all's fine and fair. Till that tooth turns out, it ain't to be a tooth. The group of fae all stare you down. You suspect it's for the best to remain still and listen to the big palooka up front. No, I oh. Wait, is he like East Coast? It doesn't matter, he's Cockney now. No, I'm a reasonable... I know it said he was also like the big guy up front, but he's a tiny, tiny Cockney fairy. Okay, just live with it. No, I'm a reasonable guy. I clock in, I clock out, and I, I don't want, I don't want no trouble, no how. But the issue here is, is that the boss lady ain't too keen on these types of shenanigans. Now I can see you're just an innocent mush lady, and so this ordeal can be overlooked this time. Unfortunately, we ain't able to give back the two for yours. Company practice. Capiche? Just. They say capiche. They say capiche down south. Don't worry about it. Capiche? <laughs> it's okay, they go back. Uh, keep it. I'm pretty sure that one was wrong anyway. Do we want to tell them? Oh, let's tell them. Why not? Four years, that's how teeth work. At least once you've got your baby teeth and your adult teeth. No, they just. They just grow back. I uh, bit the what? The fairy appears incredulous and his companions volley. Oh, volley fascinated whispers between themselves. Are you saying you've got a replenishable supply? You shrug. Essentially, you do. It's, it's not particularly pleasant to lose teeth, but it is technically doable. The fairies will pause for a moment, the gears noticeably turning in their minds. Hi, so I'm um, sorry for any unpleasantries earlier, but uh, boss lady just uh, really wanted the message clear, you know. But um, she she did also have a. The fairy glanced at his companions, with each in turn offering blank stares. Right. Um. Well, she's got a particular taste, it would seem. What did he just say? You know, sh shaved over some food is it's like a, a nice mushroom powder. You know, if you, if you've got a seemingly infinite supply, well, um, my I, I um. The fairy begins fidgeting on his person, and his companions all seem suddenly much more intrigued by your abilities. Here, take this. The fairy pulls an adorably small business card from his pocket, handing it over. You look it over. There are words on the front and on the back. It seems. Is that a number? You you're pretty sure that that is a number. Though if it is, it's really long. Wow. The fairy in charge catches your confusion and upon realising the situation, procures a different card. This one simply has a crude picture of someone kicking multiple mushrooms <laughs> arranged in a circle. Uh, give us a ring sometime then, yeah? The main fairy says. Looking back at the artwork, you can't help but feel like it's a hate crime. But upon looking back up, you realise the fairies have vanished without a trace. Only the lingering smell of bad aftershave and latent face stink remains. Unsatisfied with the lack of reward under your pillow and annoyed by the usual fairy shenanigans you attempt to go back to sleep. Maybe you'll check out that Tooth Fairy's deal someday. Until then, however, it's the middle of the night and sleep beckons. And I think we're going to leave that one there. Oh, I didn't like the way I said that. There. There. But I think we are going to leave that one there. Oh my goodness, why can't I just say the fucking word without it croaking? I need water. <clears throat> but I think we're going to leave that one there for today. Um, I had a blast. I'd really do like the like text-based games, as you would know if you've watched Cabernet. Um, I, I would like to carry on with this one. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, and if that is something that you want to play, go add it to your wish list. Q4 2024, it's out. Probably maybe when you watch this, it might be in the future and it might already be out. Who knows? And um, I think that's it. <laughs>